for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground with two of a hunter. Like my boy T, we got two like a gunner. Me and Queenie, we host the fun of the Bitcoin chat circuit. We keep it hunter. The fight is upon us in the night with the honest. Brothers in trenches protect from $5 wrenches. Damage make help and manage. Savage all day, it's about what I can manage. Gotta get my life in order. Reduce the stress. Cause from the disorder. Change that delta S. Work that you prove or else nothing gained. Back in our groove. All real, nothing feigned. With the rough and the smooth, unholy or ordained. Bitcoin ain't moral, now your money unchained. Sometimes I see a plate like XTC, got a lot on my plate, no XTC, on time, no late, no XTC, key lime, no salt like Bitcoin XTB. I'm at this stage now where I'm lethal like pow, proof of work for the why not how, organized and decentralized, but never a DAO. I'm at this stage now where they want to copy paste, want to be like me, keep up with the hoppy pace. These wizards, they like me, no love for their poppy face. You think you invented that bar, but you just copied space. I'm looking forward, I'm the visionary, babe, turn it around, not the missionary. Back in the studio, excitement heightens, I should call her Tennessee, I like how she tightens. They all watching me, making me feel human. They tune into the show, but I know not like Truman. Presidential campaign, advantage, first mover. Then they vacuum the mess like J. Edgar Hoover. Use Cambridge Analytica, the FBI. You take one big shot inside, call FBI. Business intelligence, WTFBI. I know who I am, not asking who the FBI. Shaken, not stirred, but I'm not a barman. Lone bull, not awake in the herd, not even this bar can. Fuse things together, I do what a star can. You know she likes my whips, but I'm not the car man. Straight fire, Walton. And that's right, guys. In case you didn't know who our special guest is today, we've got fellow Bitcoiner, pleb, Bitcoin coder, and apparently... Wait, fellow Bitcoiner still applies, does it? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Even though even though he claims he's making magic with, with the Taproot Wizards. That's right. We've got Ben the car man. Dude, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on the show, man. It's it's definitely long overdue. I, I know I've been bugging you to uh, to come on the show for a while, and it's just I guess kind of strange and also good that you're joining us now for this <laughs> at this time. Good to be on. Yeah, uh, sorry for blowing you guys off, but we're here now. So glad to be here. Sweet. Yeah, man, it's it's awesome to have you on. All right, let's dive into it. I, I know everybody's gonna know this is gonna be a spicy episode. But we're gonna try. We're not try. We're gonna try not to take it too hard on you. Anyways, anyways, let's move over to the numbers. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. What do the numbers look like this week, Phil? At the time of this recording, the block height is 856, 341. The Bitcoin price 60,253. Big Max. Big Max per BTC 11,699. Interesting. Anyways, total public lightning capacity, 5,065. Fastest fee, three sats per V-byte. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going pretty well if you're consolidating, but it's, I don't know. I think that there's a bunch of people still in disbelief that these fees are so low, and how is this possible? Anyways, Moscow time, 16.59. Boom. The numbers, guys. The numbers. Ben, uh, you gonna be uh, you gonna be helping the uh, the Taproot Wizards with these uh, with these fees? Is this yeah? Uh, I mean, miners gonna be part miners of it. Miners gotta eat. Miners gotta eat. So you know, we gotta get these numbers back up. Like three stats for Vite, Like what the hell? That's so cheap. <laughs> so cheap. <laughs> How do you intend to uh, get those numbers up? No, I don't know. I'm not doing that. I'm just messing stuff, with stuff. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem, but. It is exciting. It is pretty cool to see uh, fees so low again. Like it, we were eternally at like 40 sats per byte for like a year. So it's good to have low fees again. I was doing a, we were playing poker last night and to do payouts on chain. And I was like, oh, this is actually affordable. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree. And um, you know, I, I've I always think about historically each time, right in in the uh, the journey where the the fees spike and we hear the panic and the narratives start to you know they, it's like they come out of the woodwork it's like i'm gonna dust this one off now because hey the fees are high you know and it, it's just interesting to to see it all just kind of level out again so oh yeah i enjoy it all right so for our first numbers article we've got a tweet from sunny poe uh there we go if you predicted that Bitcoin will go to zero for 15 years, 
and we eventually see a decline, it doesn't mean you were right. It means you've been wrong for 15 years. So yes, the magic number here is is 15. Any thoughts on uh, any thoughts on Sunny Post take? I think it's pretty it's pretty self explanatory. <laughs> Makes sense. Guess this is directed at Peter Schiff, who's <laughs> been like saying Bitcoin's a scam since like ten dollars or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pe- he loves to cope. Peter Schiff loves to cope. All right. Anyways, uh, this week. This, so look, last week when we did this episode. A lot of Bitcoiners were crying, right? Bitcoin was Bitcoin was dead, right? Bitcoin was dead at like the low 50K, you know, like we had just bounced off, I think, the 49K and change. And and people were just, yeah, that's it. You know, like I, I was I was hearing stuff like, you know, this bull run's not going to happen. And, the, you know, the peak for this cycle was 73 and whatever change K. But take a look. Look at what happened here. Tweet from DGen News. Someone who shorted BTC got liquidated for 12.99 mil. And that's right. We bumped right back up to over 62K and change. Not that we really care about the price, but the reality the, the reality of it is this, right? Bitcoin, even though people want to argue differently, it, it doesn't work without NGU. Okay. Like I, I think that we can I think that we can attest to that. You're right. Like we could see how the mining incentives Phil. work. What do you huh? mean it doesn't yeah. work? You mean you mean you mean Bitcoin I mean, adoption doesn't increase without NGU? Maybe. Um, I think uh, like it's I... it's more than just Bitcoin adoption though, because the truth of the matter is, is that will would miners? Let me ask you this: Do you think Bitcoin miners would continue to mine Bitcoin if it was ten cents? Do you, I mean should like do you think the hash prices... rate would continue to go? Should energy prices like like half every four years? Mm. I don't know. Do they? I don't know. Pretty, no, pretty not. But like the, the the like again, this is like why like a bunch of prices should should decrease, but they don't because of money printing, right? This is this is. Mm. I don't know. I I just I I see it again, right? I think the landscape is going to play out, but I, I just think that you know if we don't. If NGU, like if the number doesn't actually go up in terms of the purchasing power and the value that you're able to store with Bitcoin, I'm not 100% sure that more, right, more adoption doesn't occur. So, any thoughts on this? I think we need an NGU at least until fees overtake the, like the subsidy for miners because, yeah, like, if the amount you mine is getting halved every four years, like, you know, there's so much difficulty we can do. And if difficulty starts going down, it's a bad trend because then there's just like sitting hash rate that could overtake the network. Like it's, we want most miners mining. Otherwise there, there's like more threat of an attack. So um, yeah, NGU is somewhat important, but like, you know, we don't need to be hundred Xing every year. If we just slowly go up, that's fine. That- but yeah. Yeah. See that that's kind of that's kind of the key and this is again right this is one of those narratives that gets twisted right where people essentially create the narrative that it essentially does have to do this and if bitcoin doesn't do these outsized move then it's failing. So this is where we kind of kind of get lost in that uh, in that nuance. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's what I've got for the numbers. Walton, any final thoughts on this? Not, not really. I, I kind of want to talk to Ben. Okay. All right. That, fine. Yeah. Fine. We're going to move it yeah. over to the fireside think, chat. I, guys. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Fuck it. All right. We're done. This wraps up the numbers. We're going to move it on <laughs> over to the fireside chat. One, the fireside chat is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at CypherSafe.io. Check out the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium, beautiful craftsmanship. Check it out at cyphersafe.io. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to dive into the fireside chat with Ben the Carman. Um, I've known Ben for a long time. Now, uh, he's also part of the major part of the um, Council of Ben's, which I supported uh, previously. Uh, I, I don't know if that's shit gonna... cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean for supporting the council of Ben's. I don't mean Ben here. For, 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 at, at least at this moment in time. Yeah. Well, 
now, now I'm starting to rethink all this, you know, now I'm starting to rethink all this. All right. So look, so look, what, what are we talking about? Right. So we saw this week, Ben put out a, a tweet uh, that he is leaving uh, mutiny wallet, but not only did we see that we saw, um, I believe uh, mutiny CEO, Tony, um, that put out a uh, a tweet uh, that was linked to a blog post explaining how Mutiny Wallet was going to be winding down winding down operations. So that that tweet uh, came out first, and then Ben gave the sad news uh, that well, sad news for us that he was going to the Taproot Lizards. Uh, so yes, let's let's dive into this, Ben. Let's what what happened if if you can share? Yeah, I mean. Um... In the in the mutiny blog post, basically kind of outlined like why we're shutting down. Um, kind of the gist is like Tony, you know, like all of us, we've been like Bitcoin devs for like last like six seven years, and it's it's very tiresome. And Tony's basically just burnt out on it, and the rest of us were like kind of burnt out on the wallet, where it's just like, okay, like Tony doesn't want to do the wallet anymore. That's okay, but like the rest of us are just like, well. It's not like Mutiny's like has millions of users and it's like worth like sticking it through and like um I've been like writing um like earlier this year about like different limitations of lightning and and stuff like that where it's like you know we try to make this like easy to use uh, user facing wallet and it's like just basically all the pain points of lightning still end up being there just because it's just like the reality of lightning. So we added like all the Svetiman stuff to try to paper over that. And that has its own set of trade-offs. And it's just like, a lot of it's just like, okay, like this isn't what we want to build. Like, you know, I, like, I don't think Mini is going to be the thing in 20 years. So it's like, why are we doing this now? If it's not like a, a long-term thing. And uh, so we kind of just like decided, well, like it's not making money. It's not um, the thing we want to be working on for like, you know, for the long term. So like, why are we doing this? So, Basically, they're going to move on to do like less Bitcoin things, more like Bitcoin adjacent things. And Mm -hmm. uh, for me personally, like I, if I don't work on Bitcoin things, I get like extremely bored. I had this previous job. So I was like, well, I need to go find a a new job then. And um, the Tapper Wizards guy reached out to me um, previously. So talk to them and uh, here we are. So there was wait, so he doesn't have a name, just the Taproot Wizards guy like reached out to you. Is that Uh, you? I said guys, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, we didn't hear the S. Me. Sorry, we didn't hear the S. Um, I, <laughs> but, I wanted yeah. to ask you though, if you can, because um, there was something very specific in the uh, in the tweet that that Tony put out. He specifically said that that he fell um, he fell out of love with the industry and Bitcoin. Um, I don't know, man. I I, I know that I, I'm not asking you to speak for him, but like just knowing that you had worked with him to me, like that kind of sounds. I don't know that that sounds a little bit more I don't know less financial and and more like interpersonal. I mean, but, yeah, it's like uh, just like you know burnt out on like having to deal with Bitcoiners where it's like you know he's like you know like I still like we have like a mutiny house like we all live together but um like he, he's still like you know I'm he's like I'm not gonna sell my Bitcoin but he's just like you know having to like deal like user facing stuff where it's like I mean Bitcoiners are ruthless where you know you pay five sets for V-Byte and they're mad because it could have been four sets for V-Byte and stuff like that. It's like just dealing with like people like that yeah. where it's like, you know, I have to deal with like all these annoying people and, um, he's you stuck know, on this like podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Like I'm stuck here right now. What the fuck? So yeah, like you're just like dealing with, uh, you know, all these people who like, you know, it's like a thankless job of like doing open source work. And uh, so to be clear, it was Tony that that started mutiny. And then it was also Tony that initiated the mutiny from mutiny. (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not putting all the blame on Tony. Like, I mean, he basically like kind of said like he wants to step away and the rest of us like, you know, that's probably a good idea. Cause like we all had our own internal issues with mutiny like personally and then like basically him telling us this was like kind of just like made us all like come to realization of our own feelings as well okay so so mute there was a mutiny um and and then you joined taproot wizards and now bitcoin is making you walk the plank um a little bit yeah what what, yeah um they sent you a hat right like what? Do you, like how? How does it? How does it go? Is it like Hogwarts, where like you have to like? There's like a special hat that tells you what type of hat you meant to have. Like, like so you know, like I don't know. 
yeah what kind of wizard you are how does it how does it work um i just gave they said they're gonna send me a laptop and then i got a hat instead so you know the when do you get a robe? out early <laughs> i did not get a robe you you don't get a robe i feel like no. i feel like yeah i don't know because I I did notice when I was when I was digging into some of the old stuff uh, about the uh, the Taproot Wizards I, I remember seeing that picture right of of Udi and uh, Eric with the the robes on stage. Uh, yeah. I was thinking to myself, I'm like Ben. Ben seems like a he could be a robe dude. So just saying. Never really been a robe guy, but you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. So we'll see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, so let, let's go back into the whole you're making magic here uh, at, with the uh, with the Taproot Wizards. What what is um what is Cat VM? Because I've heard of Bit VM, and are you just calling it Cat VM, or is this a whole other uh, opcode thing? And I just I, I have no clue, and I'm confusing everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, Cat VM is separate than Bit VM, but yeah, that's what I'm going to work on at Taproot Wizards. Like basically, I'm just like. Kind of how it says Muni, it's like lightning for end users kind of sucks. Um, so my, in my view, it's like we need an alternate scaling solution. So cat VM is like an attempt to make a different type of layer two. It does require op cat, so it's like, you know, hopefully we get op cat. But uh that's yeah, that's kind of the idea. It's like making an alternate can, scaling solution that has different trade-offs. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that works? Is it is it is it a little bit like a kind of arc concept where you're solving for this inbound liquidity problem? I mean, yeah, there'll be like no inbound liquidity or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like just basically a lot better like UX on that side. It's going to have a different set of trade-offs where you might have like, um, you know, you, you might not be like extremely self-custodial. We could always force close out, but you have That's... some other sort of properties, but um, where it's like optimistic and stuff like that. But um, so I mean, a lot is... of it's like all theoretical, so we don't totally know yet of how it's all going to flesh out in the real world but uh yeah does it need a shit coin no no so you can always use bitcoin like that's kind of <laughs> the, like my i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't like you know maybe we could have bitcoin payments be self-custodial so the, like that's kind of my hope is like you know i i don't think lightning is going to be like what my mom uses at mm -hmm. least like i mean you know my mom's not going to have a lightning channel at the very least she may be paying lightning invoices but you know not from her own channel she may be using Something like Cat VM that has like a lightning bridge and stuff like that. So I think um, like we just need something to try something else because the current scaling stuff for Bitcoin is like it's not going to work for end users. So. so you see lightning as this kind of settlement layer between Bitcoin banks and other financial institutions, maybe running e-cash mints or like other 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 layers, um, but not like lightning not being for like no you, you don't see plebs running their own lightning nodes in i don't know 10 years time i mean like i still run my own lightning node i hope everyone can run their own lightning node but like it's like the reality is is like if bitcoin gets significant adoption on chain is going to be too expensive for you know someone that doesn't have enough didn't we just bitcoin say fees were like two or three sats per v byte like um I mean, yeah we're pretty early like your, your wizards ran out of money um I mean, it's, I think we're just so early is the thing. It's like, I mean, that was, uh, you know, like another reason, like, where we, like, kind of, like, gave up on Unity is just, like, just kind of realized, like, Bitcoin payments don't exist yet. It's, like, everyone uses it to hodl, and, like, no one really is, like, going out and spending their Bitcoin or, like, really wants to. So it's, like, why are you making a spending wallet? And it's just, uh, you know, it's just the reality of the world we're in where no one's really moving their Bitcoin around besides, like, um buying bitcoin and like dcaing so like making a spending thing is not very useful nowadays um you know hopefully it is in the future but um i think like to get there we need to make a better experience than what we than like fiat payments and we're just not there yet but i mean like the monetary aspects of holding bitcoin is much better than holding fiat but like you know going to buy coffee it's much easier to use a credit card than to use bitcoin mm. Yeah, but I like that because I can like not pay for it for a month. That's because you know you can have like a month of free credit or something like that. I think there's more, there's more to it than the, uh, otherwise. If like if 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 someone offers me a discount for paying in Bitcoin, I usually pay with a Lightning instead of a credit card. Mm. Um, but the the free month of credit needs to mm. essentially be. In, uh, there needs to be some sort of enticement on like on the Bitcoin side to me. Otherwise, like I to me, I just see it as like. Well, I just, I, I'm just giving away Bitcoin that I, it, that I could hold for another month. 
like that yeah, that's exactly. how i look at that um so i'm i'm intrigued by your your um your view that you went to the wizards essentially to like focus on really like doing some hard work because uh, mr robin linus very much does not agree he thinks that wizards are highly skilled bitcoin developers with deep knowledge of cryptography and security their excellent engineering and research are an inspiration to many but in contrast frauds who call themselves wizards to promote scams are as hubristic as pretending to be satoshi so yeah robin linus basically thinks you're craig right um that that must be a tough situation to be in ben yeah i mean i love robin but uh everyone has their own opinion that's okay i mean it's it's very possible this is all ends up being a larp like you know cat vm is completely unproven you know it's it's a it's an idea <laughs> at this point so my so, job is to like to help try to make it a reality and we'll see if it actually works wait you so did? you're actually Hold saying on one second, it's about bit vm versus cat vm it's not it's a it's competition and maybe a little, but like I think it's it's. I mean, rightfully so. He's not a fan of all the NFT scam and stuff that they've done, which yeah. you know I'm not a fan of either. But uh, you know, I think uh, like th their mission is not just to be an NFT shop; they want to build other stuff. So one of your I joined. one of your tweets, uh, I, I saw that uh, I saw one of your responses um, that uh, you said that um, you're just going to bring all the spam to uh, to layer two. So this is something, right, because that, that brings up the whole debate, right, between – because I saw this tweet from Asana Gold today that Bitcoin is compromised, right? And, and, and it's just like uh, – it, or sorry, Bitcoin Core is, is compromised, and it, it, just, it just got me thinking of, of all of this, you know, the whole spam and the filtering and, and, and all of this stuff. So is CatVM going to be kind of two-pronged? Where I mean, you're, like, you're, sorry. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, like, you know, the, all these, like, the reason fees spiked so high, um, like, last year was, like, basically all these ordinals, NFT people, or, yeah. like, the BRC20 the tokens, yeah, runes, all that stuff was being traded on chain. And it's like, yeah, if they could do this all in a second layer, then the fees wouldn't spike so high because, um, they do it. And it'd be, it'd be better for Bitcoiners who just, like, want to have low fees for their Bitcoin stuff. And it'd be better for these DGENs like trading their shit coins because Bam. they're not doing it on chain, so it's lower fees for them. So like it's a win win for everyone if we can get this on the second layer. So, my, you know, my understanding though is that the reason they like it on the main chain is because they care about immutability. Like that's the single factor that they care about. Well, um for and the, if if you move actual... it to another layer, do you do, do they still have that same immutability? Um, and so therefore do, does it have the value therefore that they want it to have because that's my understanding is like is that th essentially they don't want to go to higher layers because those higher layers don't offer what bitcoin offers on the base layer and like it depends what you're doing like i think um a lot of these people you know like maybe they want the initial like image in on the base layer which yeah that's always going to be kind of spam but like most of the volume from all the fee spikes was not like the actual like inscription of the image it was mostly the trading of these things and um so if all that is moved to a higher layer then like most of the volume is gone off chain and uh, it saves it so um yeah I, I think like you know if you can have a like you know pretty similar trade-off scheme on a second layer to base layer then like i think most people will use that i mean we see that with bitcoiners and lightning already and like the shitcoiners already do it in the ethereum world on their um, various layers so I, I imagine it would be okay Hmm. All right, we're gonna we're gonna switch gears and then we're gonna go into some uh, some tinfoil hat stuff. Um, so yeah, here we go. Uh, so of course, right? I'm sure you've heard the uh, I'm sure you've heard the rumors, right? That Udi is Mossad, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard that one, but that that's a funny one that goes around uh, that he's Mossad. But more importantly, right? That the Taproot Wizards are, are funded by Starkware, right? And uh, Daniel Prince uh, had uh, you know fellow. Well, that's Bitcoin not a rumor, room. right? That's that's a fact. No, I, I, I'm just saying, right, like based on the information that we have, we can see that like, you know, the money comes from, quote unquote, ex-Israeli intelligence. What are your what are your thoughts? Like, isn't that kind of strange? Like, don't like to me, I remember when I first learned about that, I felt it was like, like, what is Israeli or ex-Israeli intelligence doing investing in Taproot Wizards? <laughs> so that's yeah, just, anyway, I mean. 
I mean, it, there's a couple chains there. Like, it's not directly. It's you know, it seems like it's yeah, multiple of course. hops. But uh, I mean, yeah, th there's suspect funding all over the Bitcoin space. I mean, like Michael Saylor or the Michael Strategy Office is like right down the the street from CIA. It's like okay, right? there's uh, <laughs> there's lots of weird things every week. There's tether. <laughs> There's Tether. There's Tether. Yeah, Tether, tether is like really owned by the government, which is like funding Swan and all these other people. So like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of shady funding in the Bitcoin space. Um, you know, I'm, me and we had VC investors and I'm not totally sure where they all got all their money. I'm, you know, all our investors were great people. So I'm sure it wasn't directly government funded, but it's very possible there's, there's some there. They're and, all great uh, people. Yeah, but like, um, I mean, like my mission is to build out something, you know, if, if, this, if in re, Israeli intelligence comes and tells me to like do something, you know, I'll I'll speak up because like that's fucked up, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, you know, like at the How end of the day, how do you know like, when that happens though? Because I think a lot of this kind of stuff happens without people realizing that they're being nudged in some direction. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, my goal is to build like an alternative layer two that hopefully works. And uh, oh. You know, if, if Israeli intelligence wants that, then good for them, because I think that's a good idea. But um... cool. I, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to sorry, I wanted to go back to this, the alternative uh, layer two. So because you were talking about trade offs and I, Walton was asking some questions, I didn't want to interrupt. But so the trade off essentially sounds to me like centralization, right? Like because I, I feel as though to make a superior end user experience for whatever reason, um, we like the trade off always seems to be some type of a third party is that am i close um maybe i, I think theory. like maybe with existing bitcoin but like you yeah. know opcat or uh cat vm requires opcat so like i, I think more of the trade-off is we need to get a soft fork and then we can enable all these other um different schemas because like kind of the inherent problem what bitcoin has right now is um we have all these different scaling solutions or like we have all these theoretical ones like lightning but it's like inherently lightning only scales payments where you don't have to have every single transaction on chain, but it doesn't scale ownership where you still need a UTXO for basically every user. And mm -hmm. that's the problem that that's like the scaling limitation we're running into nowadays where you still need a channel for every user. So every user has to have an, on an individual like on chain transaction and all this stuff. So that gets expensive <laughs> and like something like OpCat or any of these covenant proposals would allow us to have one UTXO represent many users. And, um, that's kind of like what we're missing. So any sort of software kind of will fix that and like make it so centralization is much less needed where like, instead of like having like a, you know, like- We can have channel like factories, individual... right? Like we can like open channel a bunch of lightning is... channels yeah. all in the same transaction. That, that's how like we'd use covenants to enhance lightning. But you know, there's things like Arc, which has its own um, different things that are enhanced by covenants. You know, CatVM requires um, something, you know, it's uh, OpCat for its covenant and stuff like that. So there's different, various different ways we can use covenants. But yeah, there's like a, that the inherent problem is we can't scale UTXO ownership. So um, hopefully we can get that. So would you say that you are a supporter of Russ, of uh, Rusty Russell's um, great script restoral project? It, yes, I think that's like yeah, a yeah. fantastic idea. Like I was pro OpCat before then. But um, when it, before he proposed it, but now like going through it, it's like, okay, I think like this is like the idealistic version of like what we can get Bitcoin script to is like, you know, kind of how Satoshi intended, it seems like, but like building it in a way that's like extremely DOS resistant and like, you know, not going to be exploited where like we have like fundamental ways to like measure almost computation on Bitcoin where today we kind of just hack it in of just like these these few opcodes have like computation costs and that's it versus like now we can give it to everything and like kind of do away with all these different DOS vectors that Bitcoin has while br safely bringing back all the old functionality that would enable like all these things. And it's like all this functionality too. It's like, you know, we just don't have like multiply in Bitcoin script. We have addition and subtraction and multiplication. Mm. Why? Because Toshi disabled it, you know, 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, we just were we've been too scared to bring it back. But um, now that we'll have like safe ways to bring it back, then it's like, well, we should do it then. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm very I'm very interested. Yeah, like I'm interested to see what happens and and curious. You know, like I I'm I'm one of those people. I I don't just immediately support or not support something just based on social narrative. I try to, you know, I try to go in and like read 
you know, about the the spec myself and see what I can understand from it. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely curious to see what happens with that. Um, here, I've got one comment here I want to pull up from from Giacomo. Okay, so this is the this is obviously in regards to mutiny. So let's let's see here. Identify good software that is. You're stealing uh, my rec tweets, Phil. What are you talking about? This is. I'm kidding. Oh yeah, I'm like what? No, no, this is mine. Anyways, uh, so yeah, identify good software that is going in the direction of good scalability and privacy for Bitcoin and Lightning. Right? This is what he says. Hire its main developer advocates to fud on Bitcoin and Lightning and promote shit coins instead. Literally just happened with Mutiny. So you could. So I mean, he kind of kind of gave you a bit of a shit sandwich there, right? Gave you some good stuff, but he gave you some bad stuff in there too. What yeah, you, yeah. What, what What are your thoughts on uh, on, on Jackamo's take about what happened? I mean, I love Jack and but like, I mean, this is just conspiracy theory. Like, um, I was very upfront with the Taproot Wizards guys. Like, I'm not joining unless we actually are shutting down Mutiny. Um, you could ask anyone on the Mutiny team. Like, I have the the DMs. I could prove it. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's just like not what happens. I mean, basically, it's like I've been t I've been like fudding lightning for the last like six months to a year, like on mm. my own, and. Uh, you know, while building a lightning product and, uh, you know, now I've kind of just come to terms with that reality and moving on to something else. Um, I mean, I do, I'm still very bullish on lightning. I still have like my own personal lightning projects I'm working on. It's just like, I just don't think it's going to be like what my mom uses to, to make Bitcoin payments. Um, at least like she's not going to have her own lightning channel. So if that's the reality that we're going to live in, then maybe we shouldn't build end user lightning wallets. So that's kind of just like, the conclusion we came to i don't think it, is, it doesn't have to be a, a conspiracy theory or anything like that so yeah i don't know yeah yeah i appreciate that man yeah i appreciate your take walton you have any more questions for uh, for ben before we move on um yeah what's what's jameson lop's involvement in in all of this how come how come he's a wizard oh he's a wizard i don't know i've i've i haven't asked he's not in the slack so I don't totally know. I think they maybe just gave him a wizard, but who knows? Interesting. I wasn't aware. I don't really, I don't really follow any of his stuff. Anyways, all right, dude. Yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of stopped. I kind of stopped following it right, like after yeah. they they picked up um, what's it called? Um, you know, Ethereum with 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 Casa, oh, yeah. but um, um, they burnt me with the Casa too. They they burnt me with well, that product. Like, that was... I'll just show you this this photo that um that may, maybe I took um at a party and saw saw this guy wearing a hat. So yeah, it's like he's one <laughs> of them. Anyway. Oh god. <laughs> All right, Ben. I, I hope I, I hope that they they don't steal your soul. Um, I, I really hope not. And uh, good luck, though, obviously, right? Like, you know, good luck with what you're doing there. Hopefully you will be the one that is the the light bearer in the uh, in the darkness that uh, that is the taproot lizards, uh, according to some of us. Anyways, though, this is uh, th this wraps up the fireside. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, scale Bitcoin. laughs> this wraps up the fireside chat. We are going to move it on over to wrecked. <laughs> All right, guys, let's dive into Rekt. Here we go. Some some shitcoin stuff, right? We're not surprised. We were just saying this before the segment started. This is no surprise. Just lost $7 million, my entire life savings. I trusted the wrong people. Goodbye. And of course, what did they do? They bought this ridiculous, you know, this ridiculous shitcoin, RTR. And there you go. You could see it just down. I mean, guys, this is, this is not an anomaly. This is what I've been saying. This is what many Bitcoiners have been saying over and over again. This is the use case. This is the shitcoin use case. Anyways, speaking of things that didn't work, things that failed, this might have a little more nuance to it, though. This is a tweet from Mike Germano. The uh, I think he's, what, what is he, uh, something for Bitcoin Magazine here. President of Bitcoin Magazine, that's right. Okay. ta -da! Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Walton's, uh, Walton's uh, so rap is in that episode. You can't even buy this issue, right? You, this this is an issue that um, the, one of the reasons why they I think they, they sold so poorly is because they got sued and they're not allowed to sell it. And so you can't even buy these. And I, I got one in Nashville because I actually wrote uh, a rhyme that's in this edition. Um, yeah. Uh, and so I only have one copy and I put it in a plastic so Walton Walton took this case and, and just he destroyed he wrecked my wrecked uh, tweet. But yes, that's exactly right. So the way that he framed it, though, because he didn't explain the nuance that Walton just explained, but he makes it sound like, hey, it's the worst selling issue in Bitcoin magazine's history. Right. So 
But like Walton just explained, there's some nuance to that, why mm -hmm. that happened. Okay. And it's because of that cover. Anyways, anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah, guys are not going to like this. The adoption people, uh, Phil, you're such a hater. Too bad. Anyway, so here we go. This is, uh, yeah, it took a screenshot. Uh, Ireland grows its crypto stash with seized dark web Bitcoin. So what did I do? I retweeted it and said, oh, look, it's another country acquiring Bitcoin. If you haven't figured it out yet, not a single country will need to purchase Bitcoin when they can simply steal it over and over again. And I firmly believe that. And, and again, the wording I, I put is very intentional. Need is on purpose, right? Because El Salvador is, I, I'm, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm, I'm going to give them a, a golf clap for this because he is actually not stealing Bitcoin from his citizens. The country is actually purchasing it. So even though there's like, a, you know, nobody is perfect, other countries, they're just stealing it from their citizens. <laughs> so I just don't see, I, I just don't see a future where countries ever really need to purchase it. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I think I mean, they're kind they of equivalent. Taxes? Yeah, like taxes are just stealing as well. So if you tax people right. and then buy it, it's the same as just stealing it. Like, oh, it's just, that, you know, that's a good point too. Dollars. That's kind of my point. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, so there you go. You guys made my point, and I didn't even know. I didn't even think of that angle of it. But you're absolutely right. All right, moving on, moving on. That's right. We're all wrecked. Countries don't need to buy it. Okay, nobody is surprised. I don't think any of us should be surprised. Uh, it's a retweet from uh, Brian Trolls, Shinobi. Oh, God, they're going to do a stable coin. And yes, I actually of did course. see DJT um, in Nashville. Oh, just did you? Like, I just don't care to, like, meet any of these politicians. Like, what? No. Like, just... <sighs> they're weird. No. Yeah. What, it, it why does weird. anyone think, like, they're actually going to do anything positive? Like, they, politicians are good at learning what words to say to make people believe they're going to do things for them. Like, the... no. No, that's you're absolutely right. And and guys, look, par for the course, right? You know, like Shinobi said, oh, God, they're going to do a shit coin. And yes, indeed. Right. Indeed. Here you go. Here's the retweet from Eric Trump. Beware of fake tokens. The only official Trump project has not been announced. You will hear it first. So we're not surprised. Right. We're going to get another shit coin. I mean, I think it's par for the course. I said this in a clip uh, that I did uh, about Donald Trump. Like this guy is a marketing machine that for, for the people that actually the Bitcoiners that are naive enough to believe that, that he's not going to use this in order to milk people for every penny that he can, like you're nuts. You're nuts. He's a businessman. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, he's already done thoughts. like Trump has done like two different NFT like sales already. It's like, right. You know, it's, it's not, it's nothing new. No. I mean, if you, I, it would be interesting to see him do the stablecoin thing. I think like that was probably like one of the most like underplayed part of his speech at, in Nashville, where like he talked about like using stablecoins to pro proliferate the dollar. Like that's actually like pretty big news if they like if there's like an official U.S. sponsored one. That's like I mean already happening. I mean yeah, Tether's already, already kind of that, <laughs> but Wait, uh, it's almost like you know. Tether is you know. Don't be does, bashful, does the we, we know outside of the U.S. <laughs> right. We but, see it all uh, around we'll us. There's Tether, there's PayPal, right? There's Circle. Everybody's everybody's fighting for that stable coin hegemony. So we'll see how that plays out. It's the PayPal mafia, anyways. <laughs> so guys, that that that's gonna do it. That that's gonna do it for Rekt. Um, and we are gonna move Wait, it. Wait, no, one more oh, no, thing, Phil. One more one thing. More? Okay, okay. Do you, one more. You didn't see Magoo's tweet? Oh, we've got to put one? this one in. Pull it up. Pull it up. Oh, let me let me sh let me show you this. Oh no. So um um you know apparently we were we we weren't sure about whether a bit clout was a scam right how how do you oh, determine God. bit clout is a scam um have you looked at it well the SEC um yeah Ooh. just uh, recently decided that it is a scam so yeah uh yeah no one saw no, that coming. Not, that's not that's not how you decide, right? Like you don't have to just wait for some centralized authority no. to tell you the scam. But the point is, if some centralized authority can determine it's a scam and shut it down, then we're, then it is. Were Bitcoiners right again? Is that yeah? And I think that's what happened. Bitcoiners were right, and and Breedlove is a scammer. So par for the course. Anyways, guys, it's gonna wrap up wrecked, and we're gonna move it on over to. The Hopium!
the hopium welcome back to hopium where this week we have two stories the first story um of course um is is the very bullish news um that that we are sacrificing my dear friend ben um i was pleased <laughs> to, to to tell the story uh months ago uh on on this exact podcast that we sacrificed Reindal uh to kick off the bull run and now we sacrifice ben the carman so the bull run may continue so this is very bullish news um i'm very excited they say that each cycle you have to you know kill your heroes um fuck the bears um and th this time we have to kill the hero that fucks the bears so bye ben it was nice knowing you <laughs> i'm happy to fall on the sword for bitcoin I, I do think like the day i announced it bitcoin pumped like 10 percent. so you know it did correlation but, but our but 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 our hearts sunk by like a hundred percent so <laughs> it's it doesn't Appreciate matter it. the pump just doesn't matter it all equal out in the end <laughs> The way that I look at it is we're at, we're at this stage um, in in Bitcoin where the 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 tail people already joined. Now you've got to like orange pill all these like normie midwits, and those people like cats and pictures and a lack of logic and they like influencers and they like flashing colors and all this kind of nonsense. This is just like. You know, friend of the show, Nifty, describes describes Taproot Wizards as a Bitcoin lifestyle brand. Who buys lifestyle brands? It's not it's not, you know, like super smart autistic people. It's it's you know it's people that like to be told what to buy, right? It's it's people that follow what influencers do. Um and there are a lot of people out there. Um is it a bad thing that they're telling them to do things with Bitcoin? No. Like, do you like all of how they're doing it? No. No. <laughs> That's really what it's about, though, right? Like, but I, 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 it's I'm just at the about, stage where it, I've just, just acknowledged it's not it. for me. I'm not the audience. Just like there's so no, much exactly. terrible music out there because it's for, there's a whole bunch of like midwits. There's the population determines like the adoption, right? And if and if you have a bunch of population that don't think like we do how they're going to be orange pilled is is probably going to be slightly different now mm. some people say oh well those people aren't the people that you should be orange pilling okay then go orange pill different people a lot of people want to sit around and complain like oh these other people are doing things that, and i don't like it fine then do something better like i i <sighs> that's true too yeah keep supporting yeah. the people that, that are doing better things you know like people say oh i don't like the the, the bitcoin conference in nashville because it's got a bunch of shit coin it's fine go to go to other conferences support yeah. other bitcoin educational initiatives otherwise you're not actually helping like you speaking of which that's what we do right hmm. yeah and we saw ben right. at btc plus plus and i'm sure we're going to see him at TabConf. no pressure we saw him, I saw him last year at TabConf. I hope to see him back. Yeah. Sweet. All right, I have one more story. In, for... there, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Go I on. said I'll be there if they let me in, but <laughs> they'll let you in. <laughs> they let you in. <laughs> <laughs> Very Might good. Might have to take your okay, wizard right. hat off. So, we have. I have one more one more story this week. Um, I'm still a bit suspicious of of uh, eCash, uh, but I will be learning more. Uh, in, in in October in Berlin. Okay, so Feddy actually launched this week, um, and and one thing I really liked um, is that they joined the the campaign to make Bitcoin sexy again um, with this with this video, right? The, I thought this was very Apple esque um, um, for the the intro. I'm going to play this for you now. I don't know if you guys watched the watched the launch event, uh, but I was I was quite impressed. Um, it, it seems like they're they're trying to do everything. One app is going to be an app that's you know you can mm -hmm. you can chat and send 
you know, payments in and do and you know the, do do everything that you need to do with with social apps. Um, uh, I'm still I'm still hesitant like to use eCash. Um, yeah, Ben, ben. Are you are you an eCash user? I know Mutiny was was using Feddy, right? I believe, or is that right? Or they were using. Uh, this is where it gets confused because there's there's, there's Feddy the wallet, right? And then there's the Fediment layer. They yeah, were, so we were using, using the Fediment layer. Yeah, yeah, we we had it. We were like one of the first integrators of Fediment, and yeah, I mean, I think it's great for like existing Bitcoin. Like you know, we, we like we don't have any of these like cool covenant soft forks, so. We kind of need to scale with like some other like custodian ship and like the Fe Fediment is like the ideal custodian. So I do think like their uh, their path is awesome. And yeah, they're, I have a lot of good friends that work at Fedi. So uh, I'm really excited for their launch. It's pretty cool to see that they're like actually doing it. And I think probably the biggest part of like their announcement is like they announced that like their app will be open source. And um, so that's good because. Previously, it was not, so it's a little bit suspect. But now that it is open source, it makes it a lot better. You you had explained earlier that um, there was uh, limitations, right? I mean, obviously, the, the, there's limitations, but there, it seemed as though that there was, like, big limitations. Uh, what were, if you don't mind uh, me asking, like, what were those limits that um, that you said that you guys weren't able to get around, that you were essentially using Fediment to do so? I mean, it's like is that, with Lightning. Is that it's like specific to Mutiny, or is that something that would apply to this uh, this particular product from Fedi BTC as well? I, I'm just trying to understand. It was pretty specific. I mean, it was more like having self custodial Lightning, which is like you know, a user needs to worry about channels and fees okay. and force closes, all these things. Where like Fedi kind of they don't have channels; they just have eCash, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Like you can receive one sat, don't need to care about. Oh, I have enough inbound liquidity or any of this um, stuff. So mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier in that regard, which, yeah, like it makes the payment experience way better. You just have the trade off of your trusting a federation. So, um, you know, you can get rug pulled and stuff like that. Um, but or like not even like a explicit rug pull, but like an accidental rug pull where like a couple of months ago we had like all the uh, the federations down because of like their DNS got seized and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, yeah. Like, they didn't even want to like steal the money, but the money's like not accessible right now, which is like, you know, it just feels bad. So you have these like centralization risks. Thank you. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Sorry, Walton. Um, are you a are you a Fedi user? I'm 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 still confused as to like who's meant to be using these these things. Like, is it is it really? <sighs> Is 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 this more for like, hey, you get your family and friends using Feddy and you're and you're running a lightning note? Like, I don't understand like who who this is intended for. I mean, maybe I'm just not part of the, the intended audience. I mean, I mean, I see it as like a Wall Satoshi competitor, where it's like I wanna, I want the, like the great payment experience of like you know, just, like lightning just works for me, but I don't want to have to manage anything. And yeah, you can like Uncle Jim it, where like you set up like your own federation. And like run it for your family or something or but or you could just join like you know some other public federation and just use that like wall satoshi just with like better properties but uh i mean it's kind of up to the user at that point but yeah what 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 why is it better than wallet satoshi because you're actually holding you're holding ecash is that, that that's why and so therefore you have something that's re redeemable but is it not still only redeemable with that with that eCash mint, so you still have that single point of failure, like like with a Lightning custodian. Yeah, so there's like kind of two advantages. One is like uh, eCash gives you like really good privacy. So like with Wall Satoshi, they could see like, oh, Walton's paying Strike. Oh, he's paying of course, Bit of Refill. Course, yeah. So they have this they can de-anonymize you. Versus uh, eCash is like really good privacy properties, so they can't really de-anonymize you. And then um, the other is like they can federate it. So like you know Wall Satoshi is like you're only relying on them versus like a federation it could be like you know a, a five of 11 or something and it's like okay six of them need to you know be malicious to steal my money and uh mm -hmm. otherwise my money is safe and so then you're kind of okay hmm. i remember hearing um cali talk about how uh maybe in the future people will keep small amounts of e-cash with I don't know, hundreds or even thousands of eCash mints. And then when you actually have to pay for something, you pay a lightning invoice and it essentially consolidates a bunch of eCash from a bunch of different 
<coughs> mints and you pay one lightning invoice with a single payment mm. um and and this is where a way that you can essentially like hedge your like the the kind of custody aspect is that you don't hold mm -hmm. any like large balance with any single any single mint how far do you think we are away from that that sort of technology i mean it I, I added that to Fatty Moon, and I think it, it exists in Cashew already. So, like, the tech is there. It's mostly just, like, the infrastructure needed of, like, there's not many eCash mints that exist. So, you know, mm -hmm. I think there's, like, less than 20, maybe less than 30 at most. Like, it's, like, not much. So, um, you know, once we have, you know, hundreds and thousands, maybe it'll be, then we can kind of get to that reality. But, like, for now, it's, like, there's 20 of them, and, like, half of them are needed online all the time so don't put any money in them so we'll oh, see wow. in the future but for now um i think most people just kind of stick with one minute all right guys that's gonna do it for hopium and you know what that actually wraps up this episode this weekly episode of pleb underground ben before we uh, before we wrap up though uh, if you could just tell, if you could just tell the viewers and listeners where they can find you and harass you, and the best way to reach you. Um, I'm Ben the Carman on, on everything, pretty much. So go, go harass me there. Um, but yeah, always always open the chat. <laughs> sweet, sweet man. We really appreciate you joining us. Uh, the the information, your contact details and everything will be in the show notes, guys. Don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream a sats, check us out on fountain.fm. Walton, how do we end this? Fuckshitcoins.com. Please like and subscribe. We will see you next week. Peace.